On today's episode, is the future of flight faceted? Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. When you were a kid in grade school, did you doodle pictures of cars and airplanes in your notebook? Well, a lot of us did. And when you're unencumbered by any understanding of engineering or aerodynamics, you can come up with some pretty Hollywood looking aircraft designs. But what if a talented and highly experienced engineer builds an aircraft that, by the look of it, simply shouldn't fly? Well, that's what Barnaby Wayne fan did in 1993 when he built and flew one of the strangest aircraft ever built, the FMX-4 Facet Mobile. Now, for well over a century, conventional wisdom had it that aircraft consist of a roughly tubular fuselage containing passengers and crew suspended by two wings for lift and an empennage at the tail for control. Now, nature builds birds this way, so it's reasonable to assume that this is a sensible way to build airplanes as well. But not everyone has clung to that conventional wisdom, and as far back as the late 1920s, a podiatrist from South Bend, Indiana, Dr. C.L. Snyder, allegedly flung a shoe heel through the air and concluded that this was the ideal form for an aircraft, later producing semicircular aircraft prototypes called the Air Up series. Now, flight characteristics were reportedly excellent, but the concept went nowhere. Later, in World War II, Jack Northrup proposed flying wings as an alternative to conventional aircraft design, and eventually his company built huge bomber prototypes with excellent performance, but lost out to the very conventional Convair B-36. NASA experimented with several wingless lifting body test aircraft in the 1960s, but when they scaled up to build the space shuttle, it was back to conventional wings and fuselage. So why the stubborn fascination with the big aluminum cigar? Well, one line of conventional reasoning is that optimum lift with low drag requires a wing with very high aspect ratio, which is why sailplanes look the way they do. And for aircraft that operate at extreme flight regimes like the NASA test aircraft, doing away with the wings has a lot to do with hypersonic aerodynamics at the expense of low speed handling. But Wayne Fan's aircraft perform as well or better than conventional light aircraft with the same horsepower, and it's claimed that they exhibit high stability, excellent stall characteristics, and importantly, are less sensitive to the aircraft's center of gravity, a real consideration for private pilots everywhere. Even more incredibly, the flat, faceted look of the aircraft, built that way for ease of assembly, doesn't appear to compromise their aerodynamics. Wayne Fan claims that wind tunnel testing shows no flow separation over those angles at the speeds and altitudes typical for light aircraft. More interior volume is another bonus. So you have a light aircraft design that's been flying for 30 years, performs as well or better than conventional aircraft with similar power, offers more interior space, and is easy to build. So why aren't they all made this way? Several small space shuttle concepts are going in this direction, but not light aircraft. You know, aerospace is a funny business. Having a great idea, a demonstrably proven product, superior performance, and low costs in no way guarantees project success. It's a little like the movie business. You can make a masterpiece that critics love and lose your shirt. Now, Barnaby Wayne Fan has a master's in aerospace engineering from the University of Michigan, is a technical fellow for aerodynamics, dynamics design, and analysis at Northrop Grumman, and was a past adjunct professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering at the University of Michigan, and a visiting scientist at Caltech. If anyone else had produced an aircraft as completely improbable as the Facet Mobile, it's unlikely that anyone would have ever heard of it. Oddly, very few people outside of aviation have heard of it anyway. Why? Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.